The Bangladesh Genocide Myth and Reality The land known today as Bangladesh became East Pakistan in 1947 along with the formation of India and Pakistan from earlier colonial rule. East Pakistan was the most populous province of the largest Muslim country in the world. From 1940 till 1958, three prime ministers from East Pakistan were elected to serve the newly formed country. In 1962, Pakistan's parliament was also shifted to East Pakistan's capital city, Dhaka. By 1966, East Pakistan under Sheikh Mujib was becoming volatile with federation citing discrimination, injustice, and systematic exploitation. Elections in 1970 gave Mujib a slight majority of 53%, however his rhetoric of constitutional change led to a crisis between Pakistan's military and West Pakistan political forces. Months of Violence initiated by the killing of Bihari community in Chittagong by rebels turned worse, and by December of 1971 Pakistan army was fighting an all-out war against Muddy Banas, Bangladeshi rebels made up of defected former soldiers and civilians trained in Indian refugee camps as well as Indian army. It ended on December 16 with the ceasefire and formation of Bangladesh. The Claims of Genocide Immediately after victory, Sheikh Mujib claimed that Pakistan army had killed 3 million Bangladeshis while another 300,000 women were raped during the conflict. On the other hand, Indian government claimed that a million Hindus were killed by Pakistan army during the same period. Counter claims since then Numerous research have been made and books published to verify this claim of genocide. Leading among these include Dr. Abdul Momin, a Bengali journalist. His work named behind the myth of three million in a systematic manner along with valid evidence refute this number as well as the events associated with the episode. Sharmila Bose herself a Bengali Hindu and niece of legendary Indian freedom fighter Subhash Shandar Bose in her work Dead Reckoning has not only contradicted the claims of Bangladesh government, she also unearthed through landmark interviews with survivors that it was actually the rebels, Muddy Banas who themselves were the perpetrators of genocide against non-Bengali population. Kuthbuddin, Aziz a decorated international journalist from Pakistan in his book Blood and Tears with support of 170 witnesses from 19 districts of Bangladesh concluded that the major killing during the conflict was by the supporters of Awami League, carried out against non-Bengali population. Mujib's claims were based on figures published in Pravda newspaper which was the official publication of former Soviet Union Communist Party. Mujib formed a high-power 12-member committee. The committee's own finding, placing the figure at mere 56,000 victims, unleashed the wrath of Mujib himself who was quoted saying I have declared three million dead, and your report could not come up with three score thousand. What report you have prepared? Keep your report to yourself. What I have said once shall prevail. Mujib compensation scheme to the victims also ended in disarray as only 72,000 claims were received. The words of his own minister Abdul Muhaiman only 72,000 claims were received. Of them, the relatives of 50,000 victims had been awarded the declared sum of money. There had been many bogus claims, even some from the Razakars, within those 72,000 applications Awami League journalist and Mujib's close aide Abdul Ghaffar Shodri had also questioned his estimates and statements We are now saying 3 million Bengalis have been killed without any survey Sayyid Karim, Bangladesh's first foreign secretary was quoted in 2014 as for the number of Bengalis killed in the course of the Liberation War, the figure of three. 
million mentioned by Mujib to David Frost in January 1972, was a gross overstatement. This figure was picked up by him from an article in Pravda, the organ of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Renowned Bangladeshi journalist Jawar Hurai wrote it is beyond my comprehension how three million people could get killed in a guerrilla war of eight months and 21 days. The raping of 200,000 women is also beyond my comprehension. I've spoken to no less than 500 people of different districts and have asked them, has anyone in your family or among your relatives, friends or acquaintance been raped by Pakistani soldiers? None affirmed, everyone said no. It may be that some of them were ashamed to disclose. Besides, it is not impossible for the Pakistan army to have a few characterless soldiers. But, how could these produce the figure of 200,000? Moreover, how was this figure arrived within a week of the liberation of the country? Who did the survey? Peter Gill for the Daily Telegraph, 1973, Sheikh Mujib's wild figure of 3 million Bengalis killed during those 10 terrible months is at least 20 times too high, if not 50 or 60. The Truth, Bangladesh, Muddy Bonus and the Awami League Anthony Mascarenas for the Sunday Times in June, 1971 Thousands of families of unfortunate Muslims, many of them refugees from Bihar who chose Pakistan at the time of the partition riots in 1947 were mercilessly wiped out. Women were raped, or had their breasts torn out with specially fashioned knives. Children did not escape the horror, the lucky ones were killed with their parents, but many thousands of others must go through what life remains for them with eyes gouged out and limbs roughly amputated. More than 20,000 bodies of non-Bengalis have been found in the main towns, such as Chittagong, Kolna and Jessore. The real toll, I was told everywhere in East Bengal, may have been as high as 100,000, for thousands of non-Bengalis have vanished without a trace. Malcolm Brown of the New York Times reported on May 10, 1971 in Chittagong, the colonel commanding the military academy was killed while his wife, eight months pregnant, was raped and bayoneted in the abdomen. In another part of Chittagong, an East Pakistan rifles officer was flayed alive. His two sons were beheaded and his wife was bayoneted in the abdomen and left to die with her son's head placed on her naked body. The bodies of many young girls have been found with Bangladesh flag sticks protruding from their wombs. New York Times, May 9, 1971 at Kolna newsmen were shown facilities where frames were said to have been set up to hold prisoners for decapitation. Fragments of bloody clothing and tresses of women's hair were strewn about. The place was said to have been used by the Bengali insurgents for the execution of thousands of non-Bengali residents an account of Nisar Ahmed Khan, a survivor from Kulna, in the night of March 23 and all through the next day. The Bengali rebels went on the rampage against the non-Bengalis in this locality. The rebels blocked all the access roads and sealed off the routes of escape for the non-Bengalis. Armed with rifles, sten guns, hand grenades, knives, and spears, a huge killer mob fell upon the hapless non-Bengali men, women, and children. The rebels burned and blasted the entire neighborhood they looted the homes of non-Bengalis and as the victims ran out of their houses, a hail of gunfire mowed them down. Many women and children sought refuge in the main mosque and in my school building. The killers murdered the Imam, priest, who begged them in the name of God to spare the innocents. Teenage girls and young women, kidnapped by the Bengali rebels, were lodged in the school building. At night, they were raped by their captors. Those who resisted were immediately shot. 
Some hapless women jumped from the roof of the sex assault chambers to escape their violators. Some old men, women, and children were marched by the rebels to the riverside human abattoir where they were slaughtered and dumped into the river. The killers trucked away many dead bodies from the town to the river bank where they were flung into the water, I did not go to my school on March 24, the day of the massacre. The next day, a Bengali attendant came to my house in Satellite Town and gave me the grisly details of the killing. Hundreds of dead bodies, many of young women, he said, lay in heaps in the school building, on March 30th, when the federal troops entered Kulna and the rebels retreated, I went to my school. It was a horrifying spectacle. Bloated, decomposed dead bodies lay in hundreds and the stench of rotting dead was nauseating. It took me almost a whole month to bury the dead. The Times of London, in its issue of April, 6, 1971, quoted a young British technician he said that hundreds of non-Bengali Muslims must have died in the northwestern town of Dinajpur alone. After the soldiers left, the mob set upon the non-Bengali Muslims from Bihar. I don't know how many died but I could hear the screams throughout the night. In other parts of the region, he said. Biharis had been rounded up and were being held as hostages, 20-year-old Sakana Bibi, whose husband, Abdul Shakur, was done to death by the Bengali rebels in a raid on her house in Nilmati in Dinajpur on March 22, 1971, gave this grisly account of her plight, the non-Bengalis in our locality lived in hutments. A killer mob of Bengali rebels attacked our locality at night. They burnt the shacks and looted every article of value in our homes. In less than half an hour, they gunned to death all the non-Bengali male adults in our locality. They wounded my husband with a scythe and then shot him. After killing all the non-Bengali men, they lined up about 400 sorrowing non-Bengali women and, at gunpoint, stripped off their clothes. I wanted to throttle myself when one of our tormentors, brandishing a scythe in my face, tore off my clothes. With guns ready to shoot, they forced us to parade in the nude. A few women, who tried to escape, were mowed down by the gunmen. In this march of the naked women, I spotted the wife of my brother. She said the killers had done him to death they had also killed her little son. We walked five miles to Narkaldanga. By the time we reached this place, not more than 150 captive women were left. A few were shot, many were taken away by the other rebels on the way as their share of the loot. One of them was my sister-in-law, she was young and pretty. I never saw her again. Our Bengali captors detained us in six huts. For the first three days, we had not a morsel of food. We lived on water and wild fruits picked from the trees. All through the period of our captivity, the hapless captive women were subjected to multiple rapes. Six teenage girls who tried to escape were shot 24-year-old Noor Jahan who had also lost her husband. Our Bengali captors dumped us in a cluster of huts in the village of Baral. At night, they fell upon us like vultures. Some women who resisted their violators were shot to teach a lesson to the others. Their bodies were mutilated, their breasts were slashed off and Joy Bangla was carved with knives on their lifeless foreheads. On April 10th, a unit of the Pakistan Army captured the village and rescued us, American News Service, Associated Press wrote about Maimansing in early May, 1971 there were 5,000 non-Bengalis where I lived and now there are 25 survivors. There is evidence that non-Bengalis were attacked, hacked to death and burnt in their homes by mobs. 
Eyewitnesses told stories of 1,500 widows and orphans fleeing to a mosque at Mai Mensing, in the north, as armed men identified as secessionists slaughtered their husbands and fathers.